Welcome to CS 133 Columbia Gorge Community College, the Dells, Oregon, Mrs. Hewitt instructor. We are headed into week eight. During week eight, we're going to be starting our first Excel project. So if you still want to turn a PowerPoint extra credit in, this is going to be your last week to do so. Once we get past this week, you basically won't be able to do 40 points of book extra credit any longer. You'll only be able to do the 20 points worth for Excel, one of the two chapters we'll be doing. So you need to go ahead and take care of that this week because this will be the last opportunity to have 40 points available to you. So now moving into the week, you have your objectives, you have some res the textbook PowerPoint that comes with the textbook. You have some YouTube support here. You've got your directions. Some application project information. And I'll bring this up again as we're working through on the application, but it's in written form there. This is some instructional materials about Excel. It's got a PowerPoint. And then a couple other things that you can do with it that are a little out of the box that people don't always think about. They always think about using it for like keeping money records. So a couple of things out of the box there that you can think about with Excel a little bit because it does have more uses than the typical office money record type spreadsheet. Although that's its main one. And then the tips and tricks. Please I would suggest that you do, in fact, copy, paint, print this because there are a couple of things that are really tricky. One of those is the pull handle where it will change and the highlight. So we'll try to take care of that as we do it. In fact, I'll maybe just do that right now so I don't forget before we finish the video. So I'm going to open an Excel spreadsheet. It doesn't have any numbers in it, but I can easily... type a few. Now when it talks about highlight versus pull handle, if you and let me make this a little smaller so it shows on the screen a little better because this with the projector stuff gets funky sometimes. If you're going to highlight you just kind of take your mouse and run down and highlight like we've always highlighted. It's not any big deal. Pull handle on the other hand does something totally different. You have to get that little plus sign and then you pull it across and notice it's not highlighting, it's taking that heavy box. Now when I let go, see what happens to the numbers. They're all 12s. Boy, that freaks people out. You drop this open and say fill format only and it will put those numbers back and let you do some different operations. So if the book says pull handle, you want that little plus. If the book says highlight, you want to highlight basically like we've always done. Then if you get those funky number changes, and sometimes you do and sometimes you don't, it's kind of a machine setting thing. So some machines do it, some machines don't. My old laptop did not. This laptop does. I haven't taken the time to try to figure out what the difference is because I know the solution. Just drop that little box and say fill formatting only. So there you go. Those tips and tricks, though, they can save you tons of time, lots of mistakes, and a boatload of frustration because you will know exactly what the book means and get them right and not have them do funky and weird and strange things. Moving on down, you've got your student data files to download again to use. You've got your upload for your learning project. The version form on this... Um, yeah, this is another one where we're going to have some of those color font type issues. So you're just going to have to kind of be really careful with that. Application project uh, goes right here. Real reflection, your forum, and your extra credit link, and your checklist. So let's look at the book and see what you've got there. You're coming in and you're starting that worksheet with a chart. And again, you're going to want to watch this kind of front picture. So this is part of your finished product, but you're also going to have this on a different page. So you're going to have to, oops, 
sorry, have this on a different page, on a different um, sheet, as they call them. And notice the sheets have been renamed, so you need to make sure you do that as well. So they kind of give you this road map, and they give you kind of some intro, which is always good. And then they sort of talk about how to get started on it. And they just basically give you pictures and directions to walk you through. Again, the themes and the colors and stuff are an issue with Excel. There's no way, like with the PowerPoint, that I'm able to find those to download. They don't come in that type of file format that I can do. So the best we can do is look at colors and look at font styles and match it close. So it just sort of keeps working you through this personal budget all the way through, except this isn't really your personal budget, it's somebody's personal budget they're giving you to work with. Now, one of the things that students get into trouble with sometimes, and I don't know, let me see if I can get this to go down near enough, and then let's see if we can get it to focus. All right, that might be the best it can get is whether or not you have decimal points in the column. Up here at the top, there are, I think this is the one, no, here it is, right over here. This allows you to add and subtract decimal points right up here under this general that can be dropped and changed. And so if you don't have enough decimal points, you add a couple more. If you don't have if you have too many, like I've gotten numbers in, money doesn't come with four and five decimal points, guys. So when I look at that, I go, ooh, we've got a problem here. So if you're doing money and it has like four or five decimal points, you're going to have to take some out of there as well. So those are really important things. There's your comma to be added, your dollar signs. You have a lot of formatting tools up there. You also need to make sure rounding is not turned on, and I always have to look up every time how to turn that off if it's rounding it. So if you're supposed to have like 46.93% and you get 47%, put the decimals on. That's probably one of the first things to try. Try adding the decimals because, of course, if you don't have decimals, it's going to round. Do that first. Then if that doesn't solve it, you may have to Google how to turn rounding off. I know I've had to a couple of times. So depending on what's causing it, but obviously, if you don't have any decimal points on, it's going to have to round it. So keep, aha, uh -huh. fill handle. Oh, let's see if we can go back up here a little bit more so you can see more of the page there. Okay, that's obviously turned crooked. There. So now we get a little bit more of the page. Here's what it starts talking about, that fill handle. The fill handle is going to be that plus sign I showed you a second ago. Sum on a column of numbers. That's going to be, <laughs> sorry, we're not straight to the world here. That is going to be really important to do because one of the things I can do is I can look in here using a special kind of technique. Um, it's called... Uh, a formula view that will allow me to see how you got those numbers in there. If you just type them in there and did not do the step-by-step -step directions and do the sum correctly, it doesn't matter if you have the right answer or not. If you didn't use the skills, why did you do the project? Obviously, that's not a passing grade at all. That's an automatic fail. So if you're supposed to do it a certain way, you need to do it that way for it to be a passing project. It isn't all about just the final number. However, that being said, the final number is also really important. Your boss gave you a project to do, and he throws it up at a board meeting and talks everybody through it, has this big discussion, and then come to find out your number wasn't correct or your numbers weren't correct. He is not, or she is not going to be happy with you. Might be a game changer as far as your yearly evaluation goes, or even your employment status. So the final total does matter. So if your totals don't match, obviously you fail the project and you get to do it again. 
And if you do it the wrong way and don't follow the directions and try to shortcut it, you get to do it again. So you might as well just follow the directions the first time. It'll save you a lot of time and effort. And one of the things I'll be looking for is how do these show up? These are sums, and they show me basically what you've been doing and how you've been setting it up. So we just kind of continue on as they walk you through it. They do font style, size, and color. That's when it gets tricky because our color issues. Hopefully you can come up with the correct colors over here. We hope. If not, you should be able to get close. Also, you have format styles like that happens to be a title. There are headings. I love using the total row when I'm doing stuff with totals because it puts those blue lines in and makes it really clear you're working with totals. Those types of tools are nice to have. Talking about fonts, this is... If you're using the Cambria font, I expect you're going to find that one. That one is a very, very common font. So I would expect that one to be an easy one for you. You've got a title you're working with. I'm going to do some more colors up here, which gives your title a color. And again, you have some more headings, you have some more titles to work with. Just continuing to kind of put everything. And then you're going to go to adding the pie chart to the worksheet. And they'll walk you through all of those steps. And it comes in on top of it, but you really don't want it on top. So then they want you to apply a style to it. And I do expect to have the matching style, so make sure you get the right one look carefully. And then they're going to show you how to move it to a new page. It's not a copy and paste. There's a better way. It's a move chart button. And suddenly it's over on the new page. Now you're going to want to make sure you get it kind of lined up like this front picture so you're back to looking at this front picture up here. You can see it's a fairly large chart. If you look at this top toolbar, you can see it's pretty large. You don't want it to be this little tiny thing. You want it to be this nice large chart. You can see it goes across a lot of toolbars. You'll notice we're working with a, a two-tone blue, light dark, light dark kind of blue color here. So you should be able to get your, your table set up correctly. And the, this row down here at the bottom for 19 is extra dark blue. If you're having to hand do colors. You can see that again in this picture too. It talks about printing a worksheet. Boy, am I not the person to ask about that. Because I have a heck of a time getting Excel to print what I want it to print. <laughs> the, the standing joke was every time I turned a timesheet in, it was on January didn't matter if it was June, because I filled it out on June, but I'd always have to just give up and move it over to January, because that's the only one I could get to print. So tricking, printing Excel spreadsheets can be a bit tricky. I finally did get it figured out. It just took me a long time. Document properties, again, it talks about it right here. If you haven't seen it already, you should have seen it in um, the other chapters, but they review it again each time they go into kind of a new um, subject area, like we're in Excel now for the first time. And then it talks to you about printing. Now you can print with, you can print this way, you can print with lines, you can print without lines. Um, if you don't want the lines, you can remove them. I just pulled a thing here. So if I wanted to print, oh, where is it? Hang on a second here. Let me find it. There. Page layout. If I want to view the guidelines, I can turn them on. Now you can see all those extra guidelines there. 
If I don't want to view the headings, I can turn those off or on. I can turn the guidelines on for printing, so you have the grid lines there. I can turn the head and headings on for printing. So if you want to print it with all that, you have to turn that on in here under page layout before you go to your print copy. Now, if I turn some of that off, so I don't want to print with those grid lines, I can come back here, I can set print up again, and you'll notice it doesn't have all those grid lines on it. So that's something to make sure you know, is that you can turn those on and off, because I will get emails, even from, not students, but from other people I know going, oh, I can't print with the, the lines, the lines go away. It's you have to turn them on, they're not on by default for printing. So that kind of brings you to the end. It's got some, or closer to the end. It's got some auto, auto calculate. So you want to go back through that because it may be changing some things. It's going to set some things up here for maximum and minimum. So you're not done with the whole paper, but you're kind of done with that section. So now you're going to come back over here and you're going to work through that. You're going to work through correcting errors in a data cell. I'm doing the last cell entry, clearing the cells or range of cells, clearing the entire worksheet. Be careful you don't accidentally clear your worksheet and lose it all. If you do, do a control Z like in Zebra to put it back if you ever lose everything. Make sure you've done a good save before you do any playing in case you wipe things out because things do happen. Sign out of the account, exit Excel, have your chapter summary, and we're headed into the standard yellow pages. We're going to be skipping a bunch of these. We're not doing anything with them until we get to the lab. So you can do a fourth quarter revenue analysis worksheet, follow the directions. You have some information there. Be really careful. Usually somewhere down in here, it will have you go back and change numbers. If you don't make those changes, they won't match with my answer key. Another option here for sales analysis worksheet. And then consider this your turn. Now, this is a tricky one. The idea is to create a personal budget. That means it's really a personal budget. It's actually a useful personal budget. You're going to put the time in to make a real budget. If you don't want to submit that real budget, I'm the only one that's going to see it. I don't care how much you earn or you don't earn or whatever. I'm looking at how you set it up in Excel. However, I do care that you do the real project. So if you don't want to do the personal budget, and I understand that, that's fine, then you need to move on and make one of the others your choice. If you are interested, though, in having a start to a real personal budget you can use long term, then let's get this one done. It's very similar to what you did in the project, and it is probably the easiest one. Do use all your techniques as you've learned before. You're going to want a 3D pie chart. You're going to want to put it on another page because that's what you learn to do. And so you're going to want to name the pages. You're going to want to do all those types of skills that you learned as you did it. And then it'll kind of go, did you neglect anything? How did you determine the values used in your estimates? And for some of these, these are estimates. I mean, power changes every month. But if you had a record of it for the last six months or the last year, you may have an estimate that for the summer months, my power is about this amount. Things like water, garbage, sewer, they don't change. You should be able to do that. How much you spend on food, what your rent is. Now, if you don't rent someplace or you don't own and have a house payment, you probably need to address that in your questions because otherwise I'm going to wonder if you forgot something because most of the world has house payments or rent or something. So if you don't have that, just address it. You know, I live with my parents. That's fine. I don't care. 
Because remember, what I'm focused on is you're doing an accurate job of using Excel as a tool to set up a personal budget. If I don't see food, I'm going to kind of go, um, I think there's something missing because we all eat. So keep those types of things in mind. Create a sales worksheet. So basically, this is an interesting one. A popular sports restaurant has five branches. Your boss has asked you to create a worksheet to show the results for drinks, meals, games, and souvenir sales. Using estimates, create the worksheet for sports and you. Include totals and averages. So you do have to do the average. Use the concepts and te techniques presented in this chapter to format the workbook. So you're going to be using formulas. You're going to be putting titles on it. You're going to use some color. You're going to use some averages. You're going to make like a... Does it ask you to use a con... It would probably be a good idea to put some sort of a table or graph or chart or something. It doesn't ask you to, but that would be a nice thing to include. Um, labeling the pages. Now, somebody always emails me and say, well, where do I get the numbers? You're going to have to kind of figure those out. It's going to be a little research on your part or thinking about it. Okay, how much do drinks usually cost when you go out? Well, if you live at McDonald's, you can get by for a buck. Any place else, it's going to be more. So maybe drinks are two fifty. How much is a meal? Well, even getting a Happy Meal type thing or a meal at a McDonald's or a Carl's Jr.'s or what is five to six bucks. So most meals are probably in the eight to twelve dollar range for a sports bar. So pick a number that you're going to use for meals. Games, how much do they pay per game? I'm assuming these are things like video games and some of those types of things. So, what's the current going price? Souvenir sales. What are they selling? Sports and you t-shirts? Cups? I don't know. Pick two or three items that they're selling as souvenirs and frisbees. Give them a price and then go through and do your figuring. How much? Do you, how many things do you think they sell? What are their big sellers? Go through and figure that. I would assume they sell more drinks and meals than they sell souvenirs. But you're going to have to set that up and figure that out. This one is, is really tricky. And this one gets people in trouble all the time. So we are actually going to talk through number three because some people are going to rule this out before they even get started. So you're not working it as a group. So you're going to create a worksheet that compares the types of cars and the base price. Now the base price is what the car is before you put stuff on it. And whatever that company comes with a base car. I have a Subaru. My Subaru has one package added. Everything else was the base car. So what would that price have been without that one package added? Okay. Then, what are the costs to add the various additional options? So if I picked a Subaru and picked my Outback, I'd have the base price, then what are the option packages I can put on that car? I can add package A, package B, package C, package D. Then if I did a Chevy pickup, what's the base price? What happens when I start adding packages and different things like there are trailering packages and there are, you know, sound packages and there are, you know, different suspensions and there are different, you know, it, the list goes on. Calculate the average price for the cars and the averages of the additional options. So you're going to have to have the car price averages, so here's a spreadsheet that has my Subaru, my pickup, and a, what, some little one about uh, smart car, I figured, yeah. So I would take all three of those little, those different cars, and I would figure out their average base price. Then I would look at each one of those groups of options, the options for the Subaru's averages, the options for the Silverado pickup is, the options for the smart car, 
What are those? What's the average of those? So this is a pretty complicated process. This is not an easy spreadsheet to set up and figure. You cannot just get the newspaper out and say, well, they're selling a pickup for this price. That's the average price. That doesn't work. You're going to have to go to the website, and you're going to have to go through and build some things and find out what the package pr prices are for all these different things. It is going to be some work. It's definitely going to be some work. So be really careful because usually what I get is somebody went out and they looked at, you know, five different Ford dealers, what are they selling the F-54? So they write down five different four F-50s they found in newspapers or online or whatever, write down, and then they averaged all those F-50s up and said that was the average price. That's not what this asks you to do. It asks you to find the base price of all those F-50s, find out the average, what the base price is, and then find out what the average is for all those different packages. And be honest, I don't think that's a price, that's a project I would want to tackle, but if you do, you can. And, of course, don't forget to do your questions at the end. The questions are done in Word. They do need to have 200 words, just like always. And they will be uploaded with your project. I think that does it for this week.